Da, da, da. Need to get a sip of my Baja Blast. In between playing The Sims 3. <laughs> so this is Wild Arms 3 for the PlayStation 2. And if you're not familiar with it, it's a, it's a pretty interesting game. Like most Wild Arms games, it has amazing music. I like this title screen theme. It's pretty good stuff. Look at that. That music just screams wild arms. <laughs> Good times. So the entire Wild Arms series always has like a Wild West feel to it. This game probably has the most Wild West feel of all the Wild Arms games. And of course, like all Wild Arms games, uh, for the files it has like little books. There's my practice file, but let's not even let's not even look at that. Um, yeah, so. Do, do, do. We're going to start a new game. It's going to be pretty awesome. Start a new game, man. Let's go for it. I really like this opening here. It was a dark and stormy night. It's a train! Because we're on the midnight train to Memphis. So the, this game has kind of like a shell-shaded, watercolor-type art style to it. Which I think is really cool. I really like it. It really fits the game very well. There's a girl! I think she's on her way to visit her grandmother in Canada. I think that's what's going on here. And I'm sure nothing will go wrong. Guess what? Something just went wrong. Who knew? Can't go anywhere without something happening. Attention all passengers, we are currently decelerating from our normal speed. Please remain seated. This text is auto-scrolling, which I don't like, but whatever, man. So you don't get much time to read it. Ouch, says young girl. I I'm terribly sorry. It's Tony. Are you all right? I was in a rush and I guess he's the train attendant. Can you tell me what's going on? I'm not sure. I'm making the round to see what I can find out. Until then, please return to your cabin and remain seated. I do like the text boxes in this game. Oh, hey, you, you can't go in there. Thanks for the tip. Yep. 
this auto scrolling goes fast, so it's hard to e even read most of it, but that's how it is. Hmm. Miss, please, the car is off limits. And no, I don't think this is the Tony from Wild Arms 2. That's because there's something important in there, right? That is correct. And that is precisely the reason why the car is off limits to all passengers. Then if something were to happen, there's a good possibility it might happen in there, right? I mean, look. Uh-oh. Somebody broke in. No, this can't be happening. That's impossible. The fact of the matter is, I have the key to the car in my hand, see? So it was an inside job. Well, if that's true, then you have the key. It's also true that you're, you're the one that can open it. I say we take a look inside. We might find more behind the truth. Maybe. I'm thinking maybe Leticus broke in. I think that's what happened. Thank goodness. Everything seems to be in order. But let me check the crate, just in case. All the windows are boarded up. You sure are taking precautions. What exactly is in there, anyway? Must be something important. Maybe it's the Holy Ark. Oh. Looks like it's something mystical. Oh, you're always the pariah. Wow, what are all these lights? It's the Aurora Borealis! Uh-oh. We got people! Who are these nerds? So here we have the character selection screen. Like in the first two games, you get to choose who to play as, but you have to play through all of them. You have to play through all of them, so it's kind of your choice. But the interesting thing about in this game, unlike the first two games, there's actually like cutscenes before the character selection screen. So we got to play through all four character prologues. So that's fun. So we got girl in first class, a suspicious intruder, a drifter guardsman, and boy who broke in. Sounds exciting. And each one has a number of stars by it. That's basically how difficult it is. But none of them are really that hard. So, you know, it doesn't really matter. I guess we'll play as boy who broke in first because I don't know why. Because why not? Because I said so. That's why. So this is Jet. That's right, Jet. He's a pretty cool dude. He's a big fan of Wheel of Fortune, so that's nice. Jet! One week before the fateful encounter. dun dun, -dun. It's a jet! He, he has like a scarf and he's wearing like a poncho. How cool is that? Jet Undero. A drifter who makes a living as a treasure hunter. And he's got silver hair. But that's not all. He is an outlaw willing to face danger. And won't hesitate to stoop low in order to earn his daily bread. L living for the moment, what is it that he truly seeks? Could the answers be found within these ruins? Oh, that sounds like Jack's intro in the first game. <laughs> so we are in control. So this is doomed to obscurity. The first dungeon of the game. This game has awesome names for dungeons and towns and such. Uh, Doom to Obscurity, that's just a badass name. So it's cool if you just kind of sit still, it, 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 it'll, it'll kind of show you your money and your time and tools and all that stuff, that's cool. So here's the menu. It looks quite a bit different from the first two games, but it's nice. What do we got? 
Items. Use items in possession. So we got Healberry, of course. You start out with 10, which is pretty generous. Restores 300 HP consumable. And Gimel Coins are back. Save or resume your game from anywhere. So unlike the second game, in this game they, they do the same thing, but you can also save anywhere with them. Other than battles, because that wouldn't make much sense. Let's see, we got Medium. In invoke Guardians and Allocate Skills, which we can't really use right now. Auto Battle, which I never bother using. It's, I, I just don't really find it to be useful. Formation, set character positions in turn order. But we only have one character, so that's not going to do much. Status, display character status. I like the status icon has a picture of the girl. Because why not? So you, you can look at your status screen, you can press select to look at your character, which is nice. So you pretty much have the same stats as usual, except you also have aim, which is obviously your accuracy. And much like the second game, you don't have MP, you basically use FP to use your abilities and such. And vitality, basically vitality will heal your HP after a battle. So that's pretty much how that works. And every character in this game uses, uses an arm as their main weapon which is kind of interesting. So we have the the Airget Lamb B V2, which is basically like a machine gun. So that's cool. Personal skills, we don't have any. We don't have any Arcana. You can actually look at your arm stats, which is nice. Shot, which is basically attack. Hit, which is accuracy. Bullet, which is how many shots you have. Weight, which is new. I think weight pretty much, like, s slows you down if it's higher, I guess. I don't know. And crit, 0.3. So that's cool. Alrighty, then. System, customize gameplay settings. So let's see, what, what do we want to do? Customize, I think that's pretty much fine. Menu, use tools. Buttons are pretty much the same for the most part, as in the first two games. Da, 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 da. Oh, crap, what am I doing? I'm, I didn't realize I was pushing stuff. Okay. That's great, man. Okay. Sound, that's fine. Compass on. You definitely want that. Battle speed turbo. Hmm. I'm not sure what that's like, but... I don't think I've ever tried that, actually. Battle command neutral. That's fine. Cursor memory... Screen. You can just move where the screen is. We don't really need to bother with that. And of course, every Wild Arms game has to have a screensaver. That's just the way it is. You you know we gotta show off the, the almighty screensaver of legend. Set that to a minute. And let's just sit here and check out the screensaver. I really don't care for the screensaver in this game that much. I mean, it's alright, but I definitely prefer the one in the first game. Because it showed, like, item icons flying all over the screen. In, in the second game, it had, like, the domino thing. In this game, I think it has, like, a bunch of colors or something. Something like that. So that's pretty sweet. I don't remember if there's a screensaver in the fourth or fifth game. I really don't recall, but... But yeah, screensavers are kind of Wild Arms thing. Not very many games have screensavers for some reason. I kind of like the, the idea of having a screensaver in a game, though. It's, it's kind of cool. There it is. Ooh. It's colors! So... It's kind of like a typical screensaver you would have on a computer. It, it's pretty cool and all, but... But I do prefer the one in the first game. It's like fireworks! Not bad or anything, though. 
I suppose it's kind of fitting for this game, right? Yeah. Alright. Enough screwing around. We gotta... We gotta do stuff. So, so Jet starts with the boomerang tool. Use the directional button to control the trajectory. Oh. Okay. You can actually move it with the control pad. It's kind of like the 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 uh, hurl knife in the second game. You can like hit switches and stuff. That yeah, figures it's locked. Also, in the text box you can push select and it'll kind of show show your character, which is nice. I kind of like that. Might as well search the area. All right. So we gotta find a way in here. Whoa. When facing a ledge, while holding down the directional button or left analog stick, you may find yourself tottering. Press the X button to jump off the ledge. You can also just run right off a ledge without even having to push the X button. Just like in the second game. Well, there are Wild Arms 1 through 5. That's the main series. And then there's Wild Arms Crossfire, which is a tactical RPG on the PSP. And they actually just just released a, a new Wild Arms game on mobile. So I suppose there would be seven. So we want to make our way up and towards the back of this place. Do, 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 do. There should be an entrance in the back here, somewhere. There it is. You call this a barricade? A kid could break through this. Push the square button to fling the boomerang. It can be used to activate switches from afar. Or, you know, destroy things. There we go. Yay! And we're in, like, Flynn Shizo. What do we got going on in here? Doo -doo -doo. We got our first... Ah! Yeah, you actually can't get that chest until... much later on when you have a certain tool. Who's this dude with this fanny pack? Hey! He just opened up the front door like it was no thing. Well, okay. Also, I should mention there are 320 treasure chests in this game. This dungeon has seven of them. You know, I like to keep track of that kind of dealio. All right. So there's two chests in this room we can pick up. Heelberry! Sometimes an exclamation point will appear over your head. This indicates that an enemy is approaching. Quickly press the circle button to avoid an encounter with the enemy. Whenever you avoid an encounter, the difference between your migrant level and that of the enemy is subtracted from your encounter gauge. Should your migrant level exceed that of the enemy, you can avoid the encounter without affecting your encounter gauge. Also, your encounter gauge will, reg will regain one point after winning each battle. You can always engage in battle by quickly pressing the circle button twice or simply waiting for it to begin. Yeah, but I usually don't bother with that because I usually get into most battles. So, yeah. We get our first battle. Of course, this game has a pretty awesome battle theme. So, it's kind of set up like the first two games. So of course we have force abilities. Jet has accelerator. Perform the command selected at the start of the turn. Yeah, each, each character has a force ability and then and and then they'll have summon and gatling. Gatling basically performs your sh your sh your shoot attack using up all of your ammo and summon you can summon guardians which we can't do right now. Ascomid! Some kind of plant thing. Bum bum bum. 
So yeah, the enemies here are incredibly easy. Also, you have a certain amount of ammo. Right there, it says three out of four. That's how many shots you have. There's a crit. Crits look really cool in this game. Also, unlike the previous games, uh, you don't use like items like bullet clips to, to restore your ammo. You actually reload by defending, which is cool. Also, after you win a battle, it says your experience bonus rate, 1.0. That's like the normal thing. There's certain things you can do, and you'll actually raise your multiplier to like 1.4 or 1.5, but we'll get into that later. Guardians of the Galaxy. All right. You want to go up here. 600 Gala. Ba-bum. Shoot! Also, if you run out of ammo and you attack, you'll actually do a melee attack, which is usually pretty weak. So... You kind of don't want to do that. Yeah, as you can see, the, the the vitality is restoring my HP. Only problem is, yeah, it heals one HP for each for each point of vitality you have, so it, it runs out very quickly. In fact, like late in the game, it's practically useless. So let's hit that switch. Let's hit that Nintendo switch. Whee! Whoa, there's spears. Bum bum. Not a bad idea to get into some battles and gain a level or two. Ba da ba ba ba. Of course, if you get hit, hit, hit by those spears, or, or any traps, you, you'll lose some HP. I mean, obviously. Uh-oh. Who the... Ah, just ignore them. I've got bigger fish to fry. Uh-oh. It's good when... Good win from Lost. I couldn't find him back there. The only place left is the Ruin. N nice suspenders, dude. Covain! The lock to the entrance was already picked by the time we got here. Nice shirt, dude. Looks like Pike got here one step ahead of us. Sounds like the person who picked the lock is causing quite a scene. Heh. It's got nothing to do with me, though. Jet doesn't care. Better move on before this nonsense gets out of hand. Yeah, and I do like how the characters have different, like, pictures in their portrait. Depending on the situation. Well, he's balding. Maybe some Rogaine would help. Young man, might you be a drifter? Yeah, in this game, you're not dream chasers like in the first game. You're drifters. Give me a break. One of our youngsters has wandered into these ruins. Would it be too much to ask you to go find him? Um, yeah, I'm kind of busy. This place is full of traps and monsters, and none of us can go any further. I'm looking for the crystal flower. Huh. You mean like the crystal bud from the first game? That's all. I'm not interested in any manhunt. I don't care about saving anybody. The crystal flower? But that thing's... You know. We'll offer a reward. I'm not sure if the amount will be worth your while, but... How much? 200. That amount isn't even worth my time to negotiate. 
Sorry, but find yourself a good Samaritan. But... I'm no hero, dude. I'm just a drifter. That youngster, Pike. He's leaving for another village pretty soon so that he can work and send money to us. I, I can't just stand here knowing that he might die. Can't you think it over? Nah. I got stuff to do. Not enough Taco Bell money. Annette! Many drifters have explored this ruin, but nevertheless, it's still dangerous. Many traps and monsters infest the area. Aw, she's cute. Danger might not mean much to you, but for us common folks, there's no way we can go in any further. That's too bad. I'm well aware that drifters make a living undertaking dangerous tasks. However, under the sudden circumstance, we are unable to prepare a substantial reward. Please understand and reconsider. I don't know, man. Gaspar. This ruin has been plundered by many drifters over the years. You won't find any rare treasure here. <laughs> nice stash, dude. But the young lad who is lost is our treasure. In other words, he's the only treasure left in this ruin. Sir, as a drifter, won't you please make it your goal to find the last treasure? Oh yeah, the Undertaker lives for danger. So there's a door here, but we can't open it. And there's a reason for that. I think you can check this thing. A large coffin made of stone. Could it have belonged to an ancient king? The contents seem to have been stolen ages ago. No matter how powerful you were in life, you can't take it with you. Yeah. Ow. I just ran into the girl. So you can leave by going in here, but there's really not much reason to.